folks today in the shop and do a little bit of maintenance. Probably hasn't been done since it was bought in 99. But wife says I can't modify it, but she didn't say I couldn't do some maintenance. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank the peerless transaxle out of this Murray here, which is a six speed peerless, and I believe it's a 206. I'm learning as I go on the numbers on these uh, small engine stuff, but uh, bear with me. And uh, give me a few minutes and I'll get this thing up in the air and we'll figure out what we need to take off to get it out. It's pretty simple from what I've seen. Got to give her a vasectomy. Figured I'd bring y'all in to show y'all how to remove this cap right here. I hate these things like the Dickens. But uh, it just makes it easier to get to the bolts on the transaxle behind it. What I do is, there's no good way without bending something that I know. Is to put all the slop on one side. Get your cat's paw. I got a plethora of tools. None of them work. This, most people probably have one of these anyway, but with some way to wedge in there, put the slop on one side. Oops, be right back. Need to put a rag on that. You know, mowing's life. Don't need scratches on it. You just kind of tug around it. Somebody can get one of these off with their paws, they're a better man than me. So like I said, you're gonna bend something up, but they're good. And then you take that A clip and that washer off the washer got bent too. How much pressure you gotta put on it? There's several different ways you can get this E clip off. In this particular scenario, I just Find the flat blade is to be the easiest. Just get behind it. The apex there. And just twist on the screwdriver. There you go. Probably scratch my wheel. Voila. And this particular shaft is keyed. Not bolt on. And you just kind of work it off like that see it's easier to get to these bolts now whatever you need to do and on the other side it's easier to get the brake i went ahead and got the wheels off there. and i don't know i forgot to show you that if the key come off on this one here like this one did you can stick a hose clamp on here to keep these short up on there because i'm not going to take well i'll probably take it completely down but or if you can can just look at the design here and just know that went behind the wheel and just get her back on there like you pulled it off just throw it on the ground on this side the key stayed on there and it's up, it came out pretty easy. If that key will not come off, I mean, you can get it off with some side cutters or front cutters, uh, heavy duty ones that is. But if you can't get it out, just leave it on there and just push your, your spacer and your two washers up against there. You'll be all right. But in this case, it comes off. can see why these guys have, or gals have a hard time filming stuff and trying to hold a camera trying to get up close <clears throat> okay we got that off and to take this thing off uh, I personally like to pull the bolt these there's two of these on each side right there I 
I like to go that method and there's another one hidden in there I'll go over that in a minute and the reason I do that is two reasons a if I pull this off these thread right into the frame and you only get a couple of shots for you eat the threads up on those so I like to just leave that the second thing is it's already squared up and it's lasted what 23 years I think she's square so I'd rather use these another thing I take off is this oh on the brake it's a spring spring system the actual arm if you look down in there is an actual spring I guess so you don't throw yourself through the windshield but to return the spring the return spring for the spring thing is this let's get some pliers don't knock yourself in the forehead now like my brother did back in 89 take them up to the emergency room take that off snake that little spring out and uh, I would say the right way would be to pull this off because you can leave that lever on and take this case down from what I've seen uh, or you can take the brake loose there which uh, in my case, give me a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and take that brake off so I can get, I can feel those pins too while I'm at it. And so I don't have to fight that because I'm old and I need both shoulders worked on. Let me just say. Okay, key to getting this off is this nut right here. If you choose to go this route and you're young, guys, you can. Guys, you know, I got impacts. It's up to you. I got stuff you can that take can this do nut this off really fast. Hands, but, I'm not making money at this, and, and I enjoy it. And I like to feel the, you know, the wrench. And these the shoulders, a little bit I still got left. Makes me feel good about myself. Try to keep that man car as long as I can. And then you take out, this is three eighths. Take that monkey out right there. Oh. Hopefully she don't break. Uh oh. All right. We're rewinding here. Yep. That crazy creature's gonna want a break on there. So uh, we're wrangling that monkey off. We're gonna go ahead and take that off because uh, that bolt's wanting to break and uh, this is the only production mower I got. Squeeze trick, see if that works. Getting somewhere, check it out. Oot. There we go. So we just took it apart the way I originally said we were going to do it. back together and test that brake real quick. And how these brakes work, two pistons, one here and one on the other side of that bolt. You can barely see. And when you turn this lever, it pushes those so let me tighten that up and I'll show you what that does is it pushes those pins in when you do that pushes those pins in those pins engage a brake pad that's in there and they do wear out from time to time but most of those actually if you're not crazy with the brakes they will last pretty much the life of the vehicle that I have seen your results may vary well, check it out. Neighbor's cat looking for food. I'm Notice I got cat food. It's okay. Neighbor's got like five cats that come over here and eat, so I have to buy cat food. Cause we're animal lovers around here. One night we had a billy goat show, a baby billy goat show up on the porch. And on this, this particular model, and you hear me say that a lot because they change, you know, between years and slightly different between models. So. Might be a little different, but this has only got another one up front. It's that one right there. So there's five total that I could tell. And how you get to it is it's a little hole top of the frame rail that you stick a socket down. And you break that loose right there. And that's half inch. And that's the bolt. 
It's a bolt. And it does I also not found all another one. It's staring right at me. There's an actual pin you can just pull out right there. So I'm not going to be able to really show you, I guess, on how to remove that type of pin. It's really easy. You know, if I didn't have all the stuff in the way jacking it up, it'd probably easy to get from the bottom, but I'm going to go ahead and push it forward like that and push it right out. And it is that pin right there. All right. Meow. Okay, like I said before, uh, we had these two here, two on the other side, we got one right here. Uh, I, I'm going to pull those out here in just a minute, but I do want to tell you, the last thing you have to take off is the belt, because it is around that pulley right there. On this particular model, it's got, you know, the old single clutch brake job going on, and... Right there, all the way up, the belt's tight. Just, maybe I can show y'all. Yeah, the, the belt's tight. Ding. Okay, see it's tight. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So I don't have to take the pulley off. Take a whole bunch of stuff off. I'm gonna set the emergency brake on this model. You push this down and you engage a lever. About a column. That lever right there. As you're holding it down and slowly pull up, and it's locked all the way down. When you do that, it's what we call clutch to neutral, and that belt is loose. So, that should be giving me enough leeway to get this thing dropped out. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause you for a minute. I'm going to pull the bolts out. Gonna stick that jack under the case. It's not that heavy. I'm not worried about busting it. And then I'm gonna slow up lowering it down and get it around that that pulley. So uh, let me put y'all on a tripod stand thingy. Crazy and break on me. All right, we got those loose. Just broke loose, not loose loose. Now the one that's hidden. We need that clear. All right, it'll probably stay in that well right there a little bit. Oops. Yeah, I can't get my paws up in there. It'll come off. Now, when you ever lower a heavier device, you can, even though you got a got a uh, jack under it, they're never, you know, evenly balanced. So, like this one here is going to be, you know, front heavy, and it's going to be heavy to this side because the bull gear and all is over here. So, uh, when I start to lower it, I'm going to go real slow and just this is lighter compared to like transmissions and rear and real rigs. And uh, I'll guide it down pretty slow. Y'all see it shift there? It takes a little bit of finagling to get around that belt. Down a little bit. There we go. And there's a spacer right there for that front one. Thank you. 
Yeah, let me get that belt. Put it around the top side of that pulley so it clears it. Everything's clear. It's like she's going to come straight down. Probably lying to myself, but oh, she did. Rare instance. All right. If y'all missed it, I'm sorry. Uh, it's down on the ground now. And uh, let me give you a close up on this thing here. Okay. Step back. Hey, Kiki. Uh, there's your whole transaxle. As you can tell, it was not hard. Just me explaining it. I could probably got it out in around, you know, five to ten minutes. But, uh, you know, there's no drain on here. There's nothing wrong with this transaxle here. It's just it's been in service for 20-something years. And uh, my wife loves this thing. I want to make sure it's running as good as it's going to be. Because, as you can tell, everything's well-maintained on this thing. Well-maintained. Oh, some stickers, 20 horsepower. So, I'm going to leave the shifter on right this minute, and we'll leave the brake on. But on this pulley, well, that thing's old and rusty in it. There is an actual retainer clip in there. And let me brush that off, and I'll let me get this thing up on the table brushed off, and then I'll show y'all. Because uh, if I wasn't clear on why I was pulling this thing out, I'm just changing the fluid. There's no drain plug. So, I'm uh, gonna take it in half. I'm gonna drain it, completely drain this thing out, and then uh, clean it out, because I'm sure it's probably nasty on the inside. And then we're gonna go install a drain plug. That's optional, you don't have to do that. But um, if you want to, uh, you just follow that part. So, give me a little bit. Let me get this thing up on a workbench somehow. Best sign ever, delivery. Toys. Okay, we're gonna take this apart. And as I mentioned before, there's a clip on this uh, input pulley. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove it. It was really rusted. And off camera, I went ahead and just with this screwdriver, I just cleaned all the gunk out and used my compressor and just blew it all off. So just a little less of a mess. As you can tell, there's no size to catch anything here. So, winging it. Another thing I did is I got online and there will be a link in the description to, that gives for all the Peerless. I just printed out what I needed, uh, came which one I had. It's not like I knew this stuff starting, I, I did a little research. I got specs for torque specs and I also have, thought I had the type of fluids and stuff. It's 16 ounces, 80W90. Um, also, a complete tear down of it, start to finish, if I need to look at that. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. All right. Spray a little penetrating oil. It might make the clip a little easier to get off, but once we start to move down with it, it will hopefully help lubricate. And uh, let's try these pliers here. Oh, that baby just snapped. Cool. Where's Thor? There he is. Sorry about the light. She's on max now. Best of God. So it, it, one side broke off because it's just rusted. I'll get out and I got new of these. So I'm just going to knock the rest out. It, it doesn't hurt if you peck on a screwdriver like that. I mean, this is a Harbor Freight. But don't be bailing on it because it will explode in your hand. You don't want that. Uh, if you're going to go any, anything more than a light tap on something, you need to get... Something right here, get you some punches or some chisels. But 
you can do this with. Do you hear that? Another piece went flying, and there's what's left of it. All right. I guess this thing ain't gonna come off easy. All right, what do we got down here? Got some looseness there. I wonder if I can run a pickle fork through here. What I'm tempted to do is use a little bit of pressure, and this is called a pickle fork. Put it right down in between there to push up against the case and the pulley, and hopefully it'll drive that pulley up. You want to know what a pickle fork is used for? This is used, this smaller one, they're bigger ones, but this smaller one can be used on some small import ball joints for a separator, but uh, I mainly use these for uh, tie rod ends, uh, outer tie rod ends, not inners, uh, or inners on if you have a uh, sector front end and not a rack and pinion, but most things got rack and pinion now, so. So I'm gonna put that in there. Couple little taps. there put too much upward pressure and knock the clip off inside there so we're definitely gonna have to address that but now that I got it right here I can stick it in the press and get it out okay and this is the shifter and we got to take it off this is a six speed like I said so this nut right here is a three eighths Square key on it. Okay, square washer. Let's get something to throw it in. I like to clean everything before I like to clean everything before I uh, put it back together. These are Harbor Freight. Okay, right there. Now, one thing that the gentleman online. To torque that down to its flush. So before I started, I really wanted to look at it to make sure that's where it was at. Now, if they didn't believe him, I believe I, I wish I owned the guy, the stuff this guy's got. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, loosen that up. Let's get that out. Let's see if I can get that spring. And check ball. I mean, that uh, key tin ball out of there. A little. Sometimes you can. See the bad angle there. So we'll go with the pocket screwdriver method. It's when you're working against, when you're working against threads, sometimes it's a little hard to get it out. It'll come out really good.
Sometimes this little trick works when you're trying to get it out and you only got a big magnet, but you need a powerful one. Ta da! Yeah. I do believe these are 3 8. Now, this is where it helps to watch somebody else uh, do it or fail, but they did an awesome job. Is you look at all these, or you can look in the manual. I would not have known unless I would have looked, but I mean, there's two in the bottom. Sorry, not a lot there. There's two in the bottom. taking them out first so I don't forget and that is the only reason Ooh. yeah the older you get you'll find out uh, this does get a little harder and uh, trying to remember where things go and you know you got replacement body parts and joints and stuff like that um, Like on me, I've, you know, I've had both my hips replaced, both my shoulders, both carpal tunnel, both of them are released. And more on my arms. But anyway, those are battle wounds. As long as I got one arm to hold my wife, we good. Check multiple times just to make sure, you know. May I do it from different angles to just in case shadow was covering one. Because, you know, hanging a lot out here. It's not enough for me. Okay, there's a couple of different ways you can split the case. Um, I'm a little particular on the way I'm going to do it because I sure don't want to bust anything off. Um, let me just show you. You can walk around with a putty knife with the metal that goes through it. It just gives you something to tap on and not hurt anything. And you can start to separate it around the seam. That little opening. Try to find one that's open. And then you work yourself, work yourself around until you hear it pop loose. Depending on the, how long it's been since it's been closed is how it's going to sound. So I don't like using screwdrivers to pop it loose because it puts gouges. That doesn't mean it will. It's just a potential. And it's not what I like to do. Right, let me get you on in here again. What I had to do is using the uh, the putty knife with the uh, uh, steel insert going through the handle. I just pecked it around it, just took my time, and as you can see, uh, she was tighter than my wallet right there getting around Pandora. My wife loves embracing it. Wish I could buy more, but you know. comes out here gets some a drink. What's that smell? And I'm gonna say, all right, Johnny Van Zandt. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, come on now. Look at him. Look how close those gears are together. Look the physical size of the swamps too. Yep. 
Mmm, like a racer out of this one. Lock that baby up. Let me regroup on stuff and then uh, I'll get you back in here. Well, I got it apart. And like I said, I'm only doing this to change the fluid. There was no noises or anything like that. But I wanted to take the time since I got to take it apart to do that and to add a drain plug to it. Uh, we can go over and look to see if anything could be worn and see if we address it. But more than likely, I just put it together and I wipe drive it because uh, I'm not, I don't want to buy parts for this thing unless I was locking it and using it for something else. He. All right. Uh, well. As I showed before, when I uh, rudely just ripped this thing out of the uh, transaxle, actually, I was being easy with the pickle fork. I didn't went and tapping it hard. I didn't realize uh, it was going to knock the key off, which, as you can tell, it bent it. And there is thrush washer and spacer. And here's the other part. This is part of the input shaft. And those splines look very good. And they fit on this. Voila. Tight. I mean, shoot, less than a thousand. And that feels good. Right? And these, and this input comes in to this critter here. And when you got the clutch out, as in clutch and gate, depending on how you're looking at it, half full, half empty. With your foot off the pedal, that means the clutch is engaged in my eyes. You're engaged, it's just pushing power through it. If it's disengaged, that means you are slipping the clutch. That's how I see it. Uh, put your comments below. Uh, it's just, it, we, we all know what it means, it's just we probably call it different things. But anyway, your foot off the pedal, this thing's just free spinning. And if you notice, it's hitting both of these gears. All right? And if we look at those gears, they look good too they're they're very they're not knife edged knife edged is you see that right there that's like knife edged but that's not knife edged it, you would see it you can probably actually cut your finger on it uh, that's actually made to way it hits this and for they try to do that to help salience and maximum contact uh, over the over the angular swipe so well when it's spinning all the time if your foot's off the clutch, however you want to call that, it turns these. These are all locked together. All this here, and this free spins. And let's look at these teeth. All these teeth look very good. Let's check in play. That would test that flat part of that thrust washer. Excuse me. Uh, what is that? Bronze bushing? It would test that. And that flat spot right there, that's going to be where the end play would be. So if we grab it, we, we, can, we can't really test that. We have to do it like this here because this free floats. And that's, didn't make a noise. I'm going to call that acceptable. It's probably a little more it needs to be. It could probably use some new bushings, but like I said, I'm not going to do it. When I put new fluid in this, it, it, it's going to be used until we blow it up because it, it never made a noise. Um, all right, like I said, these are locked together, and that's for you forward, and this one spins, it spins freely on this shaft for a reason, but it turns all the time with these, and this is the reverse gear, so, reverse input, forward input, they're the same input, it's just they turn opposite directions. All right, this... I would be, if this, if you know anything about transmissions, this would probably be called like a, a counter shaft. And this actually has, these are individuals, these, they're separated by thrust washer, and I'm going to take all this stuff apart, but it's separated by thrust washer, and they all spin freely right now. They're not spinning the shaft here, because we're in neutral. I'll go over that in a minute. So what happens here is these all these babies are spinning. Let me see if I'm seeing this right. Ooh. That's your reverse gear. Or it is. They spin freely. 
So when you take this, this collar, when you shift it via the shift linkage here and this here, it rotates this shaft on its axis and it moves this here and it's a little rough to push. It moves that around. We'll do reverse gear first. It's in neutral. Free, oops, yeah, free, 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 free willy. Put it in reverse. <coughs> Come on now. Talk to me, big guy. Oh, it's getting locked. You see how that turns that shaft now? That's turning reverse direction. And then it outputs to this gear. Let's look at those gears. Those gears look good. I've done spun them all. They all look good. Yeah, that's good. No excessive slop right there in between the collar and the gears. So how this thing works is when you move that collar, it's moving this spring-loaded tang, and I'll take it apart, and it's got like a tooth deal on it that's about yay thick. And it's got a ramp on both sides, and it's pretty thick. We'll go over that. And when you move it through here, this whole slot goes all the way through here, all the way to this gear. From reverse, neutral, and first, first through sixth. And uh, it engages it, each one, individually. And since this is spinning all the time when your foot's off the clutch, it just depends, all these spin. So the power's on all this here, on the forward direction, reverse direction. And then whichever one you select with the that spring-loaded tooth, one on each side. It's got two. Some's got four from what I was told. And it engages each one of these depending on which gear you select and then it locks it to the shaft. Give me a minute. Let me, let me put the camera down and uh, see if I can get one to engage. Okay. I just got the shift lever to move the collar to move it. And I bypassed that one. I bypassed that one. And look, it's engaged to that one only. It's a lot of play. I, when I get it apart, I'm going to look at that. Like I said, I'm not replacing nothing. And these spin freely. I'm a little concerned. Those fit a little tight. I'm going to have to look at that. That's kind of odd. One would think it would be. See, those spin a little freely. Like those thrusts or something. It's not. We'll look at that. I'll get that freed up. So I got to get a file up on that one. But anyway, as I said, the power goes to this here. Now in a forward direction from that locked set to the shaft, locks to this one here via the slide, and then it puts power on that gear right there, and then it engages this gear. Let's look at that gear. Looks really good. And I wish I could put this thing in races. Which in fact turns this is one gear here. And then it turns this bull gear here. This is a I'll go with the reduction in just a minute. But it turns this gear. And then this is what they call a differential. I can turn one axle and the other one spinning the other direction. We can have a separate video on how differentials work. But what I'm doing here is showing you that the output of that goes to this one here, which will turn all this basically. If both wheels are on the ground and not spinning, it'll spin both of these. And then it'll spin both axles. All right, let's go through the, the, the power reduction. Input comes in, you forward, it's always turning forward. And if you select this, if it's on this little one here, well, this all turning here, but if you select it mates up with this one. This one here, you got torque multiplication because you got a smaller gear, turn a bigger gear. I would say that'd probably be first gear then. All right, and then when it's locked to the shaft, it turns that little gear, which in turn turns another bigger gear, more torque multiplication. And then we go to this one here, which further turns another small gear, which turns another bigger gear. A lot of torque multiplication going on in first gear. 
So the other way around is, let's go into these higher gears where you got the same input speed and you got a big gear. Now it's turning this one much faster, but the rest of the reduction is the same. So the reduction in the transmission between first and final gear and this one would be sixth would be because you just got different size gears. That's all it is. There's no black magic, you know, unicorn dust or anything like that. It's just all mechanical stuff. And uh, if I can find a good video on uh, just, you know, simple torque multiplication um, or something, I'll throw it in the comments. I don't know. I don't know yet. It's a uh, it's pretty simple. It's just a little math. That's all it is. Multiplication or division. That's all it is. That's all gearing is. In a nutshell. All right. Uh, another thing let's look at. We looked at the gears. The gear teeth looks good. All the in play. I can't test that in play. Ever. Because they're two halves and I can't get you no know, uh, dial indicator to test the backlash. Put it together. So... We just hope and pray, and you can just look at the teeth patterns and say that it looks good. All these look absolutely wonderful for a 99 model. So this thing's 23 years old. And the fluids smell good. It probably, it probably would just, I probably didn't have to do this, but you don't know since you can't really check it or test it. So uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, like I said, this is my wife's. It's gotta be done right. Seals look good, they're sealing. Voila. So, uh, back to inside. Let's look at anything else we might need to go over here that I need to look at because this thing's going to be apart for a couple of days. Oh, another thing that uh, if you see these flats on those bushings, they got to be in there with this particular design. Okay, the older ones had a key, and you had to make sure the key was flush and then put it on, and then you're not going to break no uh, parts or cases or anything like that. But in this particular one, it's flats, and they sit in these machined flats. And it would sit against one of these machined flats. So when you go together, you got to make sure these things are flat in there are you gonna try to torque it down and you're gonna bust a case and then you're buying another one or you know welding you know all right uh i gotta go for the evening uh got a firewall thing tonight the a cut over so we gotta do that and uh i'll get back to this uh pretty quick because we need this to cut the grass you know we got the snapper snapper tore down so uh and uh, i'm not using my electric push mower do this whole yard no mm -mm, replacement hips uh and i'll get this thing together uh and uh go ahead and video it uh tomorrow night there's not much i need to do i just uh need to put in that, get the new clip uh, I got 80W90, you know, got a couple of gallons of that, and plenty of silicone. So, well, RTV. I'll be using black on this one here. You know, I'll use red for exhaust because, you know, it's orange. It, you know, looks like it's resistant to fire. I don't know. They say it's good. So, uh, but on this one right here, I actually, um, anything with oil, I will use black on it. Uh, they also make an ultra gray, and it's really good. And I used to use those on Chrysler transmissions because uh, that's not they used to come from the factory. Uh teach his own but you just need something that's all resistant so uh y'all get out there and do something